And you know, you want to drive that car and you floor it, and that six pack opens up, you want it to feel like a crazy kick down. I cannot wait to take it for a drive and try it out. And that is what I'm looking forward to. Welcome to Nick's Garage. And I've got a full shop here. Things and parts and cars are everywhere. But slowly but surely, I'm gonna get it all done because I need the, I've got Devin on board, I've got Leo on board, I've got Vasily working. I've got Manny helping me too here and there. I've got so many pieces all over the place that yes, it looks like it's a mess, but it's not a mess. I know every part to every engine. But today I'm here, I just wanna do a dyno testing on Tim's A12 car, 69 Roadrunner. Got the cover on, but we will know which one it is. Tim's 446 bar was on the dyno. I came here to make a test today. Actually, uh, it's been a cold, lousy, rainy day today, but we're gonna perform it anyways. I also wanna try something which I haven't tried with the uh, six barrel. Devin, when you get a chance later, give me the air cleaner, which is in the trunk of uh, Tim's car. And on the final test on the dyno, I wanna try it with the air cleaner to see what horsepower loss there's gonna be. So that's gonna be pretty exciting, which I haven't done on a six barrel. Yeah. So now let's go off to the dyno room and I'll give you some details on the 446 barrel. So here, here we have it set up. It's a 1969 446 barrel that belongs to Tim's. 69 road under A12 car. Four speed Dana on it. It's just a basically refreshed motor, but we did some uh, little things to it. Matter of fact, we had the carburetors rebuilt. There was a few pieces that were wrong. We went into detailing with it. Anyways, we got it all done. We put a little voodoo cam in it, hydraulic flat tap it with the special uh, valve springs. And also we did a little bit of port work to uh, help the uh, cam flow with the setup. We went back with the exhaust manifolds. We went back with the factory oil pan 402, hydraulic flat tappet, double roller chain, and uh, a few other things. But besides that, it's all basically stock. So I'm just gonna get it started, warmed up, and uh, see how it goes because Tim and I were talking about getting at least 420, 425, HP, that was our number, and close to 500 torque if possible. It is a basically stock 440. You know, he's not racing the car or anything, but you know what? This is what he was looking for, this is what I wanna get for him, and uh, that is my goal. So you know, I've been breaking in the cam, but I realized that this engine has a lot of oil pressure when it's cold, and then I wanted to see what it drops down in hot. I'm not so sure. So I'm just gonna warm it up. It's got a brand new pump. It is not a melting pump, it's a big high volume pump. For some reason, it's brand new. I don't know why. I'm gonna try it out. And if you know, if I go back in history with the 440s, I've been doing it for such a long time. I know them inside out. I'm pretty well with them. But I'm concerned. You know, when an oil pressure goes under 30 pounds and when it's hot, it bothers me. And also, when you go close to 100 psi, it's not good. You know, after all, doing so many 440s, I know I've always been between 40 and 70 pounds on an engine with a regular high pressure pump with factory clearances and all that on the bearings. So, you know what, let's get it running, see what we get, and see what we're gonna do with it. I have to go through so many years in my life installing headers in so many different cars. Uh, it gets tiring, you know, you're always fighting, trying to put a bolt in, trying to fight the spark plugs, starters, torsion bars, coil springs, frames, whatever. But when it comes to someone that tells me, Nick, I want my car back with exhaust manifolds, I just love it, what can I tell you? And we also had the carburetors rebuilt by Donny Oki in uh, Curtis, Ontario. They're right here. He's detailed them for me. And I believe the air fuel ratio is perfect. I did some timing on it, so I know exactly where it is. So what's going on, I'm concerned about is let's max out the horsepower we can today. I know it's a lousy day, it's raining, it's cold. I'm sure we're gonna have a bad barometer. But anyways, doesn't matter. You know, we're gonna see the raw horsepower, which is measured power versus corrected power, which gives you the correct reading no matter what the it is. You know, if you go with the SAE standards, corrected tells you it's all the right humidity, uh, air temperature, the right barometer, and so forth. So let's go with the corrected power, see what we get. So, are you guys ready? Let's get it started. Tim, if you're watching, this is your engine, your 446 power from your 69 Roadrunner 812 package. Here we go. I remember getting the dyno 20 years ago. We we're setting it up. We used to have a paint booth. We shut down the paint booth to return into a dyno room back at the old shop down in Montreal. 
and it was one job to install, uh, to set up the water supply, the sewer, the electronics, the little office, the glass, the ventilation. There was a lot of work involved. It's not just buying the equipment and setting it on the floor. It's a lot of work. Then you got to learn it. Then you got to get an engine, of course, put it on, start learning how to use the uh, machine, how to study engines. It's a lot of work. After going through it so many years, right now, it's just a game. So let's enjoy it. Okay, 4.350, it's a 30 overbore motor, 30 thou overbore. So it leaves us a four, it gives us a 4.350 bore. Now the stroke is stock, 3.750, 3.750. And we're gonna run the engine at, uh, we'll start it at an earlier RPM, let's say 2800. Now we're just gonna confirm it. Here we go. 4.350 bore, stroke is 3750, 445.8 cubic inch. We're gonna go up to 5500 RPMs. I'm gonna start at 28, and of course at 300 RPMs per second, which is uh, pretty good. Okay, our barometer today is 29.53. Not very great, it's a rainy, humid, cold day. Well, doesn't matter, we're indoors. We're gonna do some testing here. After the engine warms up, it's gonna heat up the room in here, so it's gonna be great. Okay, do we need anything? Oh yes, let me make sure everything is on. Water line is on. Battery charger. Battery charger. Our main switch. And I will charge you. There we go. So I think we're ready to go. And at the same time, let's check for oil leaks during the test. We're ready to get it started. Here we go. Okay. I'm concerned about that. I find it pretty high and idle. Oh well. Let's get it warmed up and we'll see. I'll turn off the water pump this way we can heat it up a lot quicker. final test we're going to put it on so i leave it on top of the boxes and we'll uh we're going to keep it for our last test good thanks devin I am working. 
working with his distributor and his coil. Right here, if you take a look, you see it. I'm running on his coil. This is the coil that's going back in the car. Still cold. I'll let it warm up. the thumper carb on but I can't it's a six pack <laughs> okay here we go I think we are ready Devin you want to see what it's gonna do yeah watch this let's see what it does I like the oil pressure there where it is on idle now we're gonna rev it up when to get it back to idle see how it does don't forget Dave, we haven't tested yet so I just want to heat sink the block then after that we're gonna start doing our test here we go. Am I ready? Yes, I am. Push one, 88 pounds at the 5,500 RPM. Yeah. 54. It's still climbing. Okay. It's still climbing. Still climbing, eh? No, it's right here. 5,000 RPM. Shut the fan there for me. Uh, okay, let's take a look. Don't forget, I just made a test just to heat sink the block. Uh, here we go. It's the oil pressure I'm concerned about. 88 pounds is quite a bit. We started at 2,800 RPM, finished at 54. Temperature took off at 160 Fahrenheit. Okay, there we have it. Okay, just to say our, fi our first test, just quick, quick. Here's our numbers. What do we do? Uh, do we need a 417.8, almost 420 horsepower at 5,000 RPM. And our torque numbers are at 494 and 3,900 RPM. What's the horsepower? 390 on a six pack? Stock, yes. Yeah, at what RPM? Stock is 390 at... Uh... It's uh, 4,000 RPM or something, eh? Yeah. I'm gonna check it. You wanna verify it for me in that blue book? I'm sure it is. Okay, and here's our maximum torque. Here's our graph. All right, let's make another test. I played around with the timing in so many positions yesterday. 
while I was breaking in the cam, so I'm sure that's the best place. I'm gonna leave it at, it's about 36, 37 degrees, full advance. And uh, the next thing I know is, let's try the oil pressure. This is what I'm concerned about. So there you have it. Let's make another test back to back. 4,700 RPM. 4,700, so we're at 5,000 because we changed the cam and uh, a little porting work on the uh, bowl area of the cylinder heads. Okay, that's it, thank you. 4,700. So let's make another test, here we go. I don't, I don't need to go that high. Actually, 53, don't need to go that high. 5,300, we're gonna go up to 5,300, that's all I need. I don't need to go any further. That looks good, let's see. There we go, 28, 53. Okay, let's go. Pressure went back up there again, eh? Okay. Same power, 418, 5000. Power is always the same, 14, 4, 498, at 3900, 3900 RPM, 4098. It's the oil compression, it's, it's the oil pressure, I'm 87, 86 pounds at uh, 5300 RPM. Okay, now I, I want to check the oil pressure on idle. Hey, this engine is pretty consistent. We're getting the same power again. Here's the graph. Okay, so now let's want, let's just get it on idle. See what our uh, oil pressure is. This is what I'm concerned about. Maybe I'll put a weaker spring on that same pump. Okay, here we go. Here's our oil pressure at uh, about 900 RPM. You know what, we're gonna put a weaker spring. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Got a lot of pressure at 55, I don't need 55. All I need is about 40 pounds on idle hot. When it's hot, 40 pounds is good enough. You know what, maybe, uh, wait. I'll be right back. Let me look at something. Maybe not change the spring, maybe I'll change the oil pump. That's a big pump. I don't need that big pump. Let me see what I've got in stock. Okay, let me take a look. I do have one. Let's try it out. I just received them the other day. You know what, now that I've got it, this is another one that came in. Uh, no, not this one. Let's go. Yeah, my brother brought this in. Uh, the other day, there we go. Finally got one. Running out of stock. Yep. Here we go. Let's put this on. Brand new HP, high pressure. It's not a, it's not a high volume pump. This is exactly what I need. Okay, let's try it out. Here we go. Always when you put a new pump on, you know, even though uh, it's on the bench and the engine's been running already, always prime the oil pump, like so. See where the gears are? Throw some oil in it. In case you guys want to know what kind of oil I'm using, here it is, right here. This is one I use most often. Hard Rod Classic Motor Oil by Lucas, 10W30, with lots of zinc in it. Can't go wrong with it, you guys. I've used this quite often. I've never had issues with it, but it's pretty cool. Hey, Lucas, uh, more oil. You guys are watching. I talk about your oil, buddy. Here we go. Here we go. Just to get the gears wet. I'm uh, priming the pump just by turning it like this as if the motor's running, so I'm priming it. Because uh, it's a brand new pump, it's dry, 
So you know, you want to wet the gears before you put on the engine started. So what I'm doing is I'm priming it like so. See, you're putting oil in it, and the moment you uh, get it started, the engine, you have oil pressure right away. And another thing I always do, in many, many cases, or should I say all the time, when you install a brand new oil filter, I fill it up with oil, like so. Devin, mm. do the honors of removing the oil pump. Take it off one piece with the filter, don't worry. Okay. Take it off, we're gonna put it in a brand new melting oil pump I got here. I'll prime it, you remove it, and then let's put it on and see how it goes. You know, I'm not concerned. I don't want more than 75 PSI. So uh, I noticed that we have a lot of oil pressure, which I'm not crazy about. So let's get, uh, let's get the uh, pump installed and uh, see how it goes. And at the same time, this is what I do every time I do an oil change on a vehicle. So the moment you crank it over, you don't have to wait for the oil filter to fill up because it takes a few seconds. Or, you know, you put as much as you can, even though it's on a certain angle or whatever, doesn't matter. Just put as much as you can, you spin it on, then you're ready to go. Then I, I put grease to hold the gasket in place at the same time, like so. And looking at this oil pump very well, I know that the opening on the suction side of the block is going to align up with this pump very well because I know that I've done a lot of uh, melting pumps and they work perfect. On the, uh, they line up with the uh, port and the, uh, the block and the pump itself. Okay, here we go. Then we put a new O-ring, like so. That's it. So, we've got the pump. I've primed it. Let's put oil on the filter, fill it up. Now when you put oil on the filter, you gotta be quick to put it on. I'm just gonna put a drop in there. Why? Because I only filled up the filter as much as I can, which is halfway. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's about it. We're good. Okay, let's get it started. You know, there's another good thing about a dynamometer. You got a dynamometer here. It's a tool that was used to measure horse and torque power at a certain RPM. Where is your torque at? At what RPM? And what's your horsepower what for at what RPM also? But you know what? It's a measuring tool and that's what it's used for. But of course you could also use it for running the engine, breaking the cam, tuning it, playing with their fuel ratios, playing with different carburetors, looking for valve lash, oil pressures like we're doing right now, listen to noises, look for exhaust leaks, water leaks, vibrations, you name it. If you're talking about transition, well, that's another story. That is something I think you should work on with a chassis dyno, not with an engine dyno. All I know is you can perform some acceleration tests with this setup. I'm not too uh, concerned about that. For what I need it for is, like I said, with a lot of people, they just wanted to know what horsepower they got and what torque and at what given RPM. And knowing that, then you can set up your car. What gear ratios, tire size, torque converter, stall speed, the weight of the car, everything. So you have to work around with what you got here, then you fix up the car to your engine specifications. I don't know, I don't work with transition. This is what I use my dyno for and this is what I have it for. And what my customers want, I give them what exactly I got here. So I'm ready to get it started. Now let's check uh, the oil pressure hot idle, which I'm concerned right now. And let's see how it does. See, it takes a few seconds for the oil filter to fill up. And there we go. So let it warm up. Give it some, uh, let it work a while.
We also have our oil temperature right here, oil sump, 138 degrees. Fahrenheit, okay, oil pressure is good. Almost at 900 RPM, we got 44 pounds. I'm happy with anything over 38, 40 PSI. So far, so good. Let's rev it up a little bit. I like to see maximum maybe about 75, right about here. I'm ready. You know what? I'm ready. I want to make a test now. I want to see when I go uh, at least 5,000 RPM. I want to make sure my oil pressure is nowhere near in the 80s. So let's make another test to see how it goes. And at the same time, look at the knee. Let's make sure we don't have any oil leaks. So far, so good. We primed it. We got it running. Let's get it started. Here we go. See, this is what I like. Hot, idle, 47 pounds. Air fuel ratio is pretty good. Okay, let's make a test. I'm hoping to hit that 420. exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Oil pressure, 73 pounds at 5200 RPM. That's exactly what I was looking for. So my situation was the oil pressure. Now we got the new oil pump from my melting put on. Perfect. I thought I got it working fine. And on idle is 45. That's good. I got it. Power, we're at 418. Come on, can we hit 420? Let's cool it down and try it again. Or should we put the air cleaner on? You know what? Let's make one more test the way it is. I'm gonna cool it down. And then after that, we're gonna put the air cleaner and see what kind of horsepower drop we're gonna have. That's gonna be interesting. So stay tuned, guys. See what happens. Tim, if you're watching, everything looks pretty good. I'm trying to get you to 425 HP. I'm trying. I'm near the 420. But you know what? I'm trying to get that 500 torque number also. So uh, I'm gonna just cool it down. Let's make a test and see how it goes. And after that, we're gonna put the air cleaner on and see what happens. And it's a pretty crappy day today also with uh, cold, rain, humid and everything. But it doesn't matter. As long as we have no oil leaks, no vibrations, nothing else, but everything performs good. Carburetor, air fuel ratio, no backfires. I've got your ignition, your wires, your plugs, your coil running on it, your carburetors. So far, so good. So let's make a couple more tests and uh, call it a day. Here we go. Don't you love the sound of a six pack? And you see the six packs, eh? they open up slowly. Then after that, you, you'll tune the springs on the outboard carburetors on the car. So once I've got the engine in the car with a new clutch and a new seal kit and bearing kit on the transmission, I cannot wait to take it for a drive and try it out. And you know, you want to drive that car and you floor it and that six pack opens up and you want it to feel like a crazy kick down. 
And that is what I'm looking forward to. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Five hundred torque, we did it. Here we go. Okay, let me tell you guys. Okay, so it is. So here we got we got heat sink. Okay, so I cheated. I ran it at uh, 153 uh, up to 162 uh, water temperature. I cheated a bit, but we hit our 500 torque numbers at 3,900 RPM, and our numbers came in at 421 at 5,000 RPM. Here's our number, 500. There it is. Hey, you know, after all, it's a basic stock 440. And you know, right from the factory, you know they advertise the 390 horsepower. In reality, it's not 390. I'm telling you right now. You know, we cleaned out the bowl area. We zero deck the block. We put a little cam in it. More uh, lift, a little bit more duration than the factory did. And we're getting just uh, 421, 422 HP, 500 torque. So they're not great numbers. They're not big numbers, but those are real numbers. So I've taken other engines, six packs in the past, and I put them on the dynamometer. I was getting like 375, 380, 385 horsepower max. But this winter, you know, we did some uh, bowl area work I said before. We did zero decking and uh, nothing more than that. And a little cam from Lunati, which is a voodoo cam. It's not a very uh, wild cam. And uh, it performs well for what we need it for. You know, we designed it to work with an exhaust system, with manifolds, and uh, basically stock 440 with a six pack. And there you have it. So now let's put on the air cleaner, see if we could do any uh, testing with that, see how it goes. I'm just curious because from what we see here, these are the numbers we got today. 421 horsepower versus 500 torque. So don't forget, 500 torque, 421 HP. And now that's where we maxed out today. Now let's try the air cleaner, see what the difference is. So here we have the original air cleaner that goes with the car. It's a Ram Air uh, package on the A12 cars. They're all like this. Now I got the air cleaner in place. I want to see what it's going to do. And this is equipped with a K&N air filter element. Factory air cleaner, K&N air filter. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready to make a test. to see what the difference is going to be compared to our last test we just did. I'm just going to run the same water temperature we did before. So we can match apples with apples, except with the air cleaner assembly. Uh, you know what, when you have a six pack, you need a big air cleaner. And this is one that does the job. And you can see it's got a rubber seal. It seals to the hood, 100% cold air package. And this is a liftoff hood on an A12 car. For you guys that don't know what an A12 car is, it's a 69 Roadrunner. It came out at 69 and a half with a six pile setup with a fiberglass hood. 
and they had, they all came with the colder package like so and uh, they were, uh, were more designed for racing they came with the uh, black rims no hubcaps chrome lug nuts on the wheel it was really an impressive mean looking car to look like it was going for racing and this is their cleans that come with it anyways this is one of the engines i built i want to try it so you guys are you ready i'm ready to get it started question is are we going to lose any power we don't know that's why we're here this is a tool the dyno is a tool we want to see if it's going to lose any power or gain any power tim if you're watching this is going to be your real numbers when you drive the car and here we go Let's get started. Oh, there's a big air cleaner there. Here we go. Okay, let's see what happened. Let's shut the fan and let's see our results with the air cleaner. Here we go. Wow. 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 Pretty impressive. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Okay, we just did one test with the air cleaner on. I don't know if I need to go any further. Looks pretty impressive. Actually, it gained torque. From 500 torque, we ended up with a test here with 504 at 3,800 RPM, 504 torque. And the horsepower is 417 at 5,000 RPM. So horsepower really did not change, but we gained about four torque numbers. Pretty impressive. So you know what? Driving with or without the air cleaner, you're pretty much the same horsepower and torque. That torque is a little bit more, but I'm very surprised. Oh, that's all, I just want to hear it. I don't, I want to make sure there's no oil leaks. Here we go. I always look at this before we move an engine. I gotta listen to noises, oil leaks, vibrations, everything you want. And now's the best time before you install it into the car. So for everybody who wants to know what a dyno is, this is the purpose I use it for. Not only do I measure horsepower torque, I look at the whole outcome of how the engine runs. Look at that. So there you have it. I got the oil pressure fixed. I got no oil leaks. I got good power with the air cleaner on. I cannot ask for anything much more than that. It is a basic 446 barrel. This is what Tim wanted. We got a little bit bigger numbers than usual, but I'm satisfied with it. Tim, hope you, uh, you like it also. Now it's just time to put it in the car and then put it together and put it on the road and go for a ride. And you guys, thanks for joining me here in the dining room. Thank you. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>